Hi, I'm iClorox, and you're watching Fighting Fantasy Live Read for Death Trap Dungeon, Part 1. In Part 1, we're going to be generating our hero, learning the origins of Death Trap Dungeon, and of course, providing a bit of a primer as to what game books are in general. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this, Part 1. Welcome to the stream. Uh, if you've not experienced this before, this is the third in the series, not the third book, but the third time I've done a reading of a fighting fantasy book. Uh, the previous two have been Citadel of Chaos and uh, The Forest of Doom, uh, both which you might be able to see still archived on my Twitch channel. Uh, I've certainly broken that up and shared it on my YouTube, which you will find in the, uh, the link below uh, down there. Um, yeah, so check those out. They broke them into 20 minute parts with some editing, so it's a little bit, uh, it cuts out a bunch of the, uh, the dead space that we tend to experience in this one because it is an interactive read, uh, which means that, um, you, the viewers and, uh, followers on Twitch will get a chance to make some decisions, roll some dice, um, and overall kind of interact with, uh, this book. Now, if you're brand new to, um, this style of book, this is uh, a game book. It is a multiple path game book, meaning that it's not read in a linear fashion. In fact, as we look through here, we can see that there's tons of numbered entries and uh, decisions will push you to different numbered entries. And those things lead down different paths, um, mostly to our doom and our death. But um, generally what will happen is we will die a bunch in this book. <laughs> um, so that being said, uh, it is a multipath game book. Um, we're going to get into some specifics about the setup for this, but let me just introduce the book generally. Uh, first, this is book number six, done by Ian Livingston. It's part of the Fighting Fantasy um, series. This book is uh, from originally from 1984, and um, yeah, they're awesome. There's a huge series of them. I fell in love with these books uh, as a young lad. It's kind of my precursor to Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, we're going to uh, dive in with a little bit of introduction. Let me just show off this amazing uh, cover art here. Uh, so that being said, let me introduce the layout of the stream a little bit. I'm gonna, this is the main uh, book reading area. We have down, how do I look, right there. Are, this is the, uh, the magic circle of dice, my crystal ball. Uh, we're gonna be rolling some dice as part of this game book for combat mostly and for some skill tests and that's where we're going to see the results of that. Um, over on this side, let me see, fingers here, uh, we have gear and loot, things that we start with. We have skill, stamina, and luck and of course we have our character name that we're going to have to uh, figure it out. Uh, the book information is down here if you're curious. We have bookmarks right in here because uh, we're going to want to make some save points as we go forward. Up at the top, uh, this is uh, stream support, fresh meat. Uh, anybody that is uh, my newest followers will appear in the fresh meat and of course build up the current party that we're adventuring with. So thank you in advance for any support that you uh, want to give me. Um, and likewise, there's additional support up here, which uh, is more of the, um, of the monetary amounts uh, to help me uh, purchase new books because you know what, $3.15. Oh my gosh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, any support that you can provide, even just uh, lurking or popping into the channel is greatly appreciated. I'm here to, to share this experience with everybody else. All right, so get comfy. Um, stream format, this is probably gonna last a couple hours, uh, so be comfortable. We're gonna take a couple breaks, um, let, give my voice a little bit of rest, grab a quick bite to eat, all that other good stuff. Try to break once every hour for a couple minutes. All right, so let's, let's talk about this book. Let's read the back here. Down in the twisting labyrinth of Fang, unknown horrors await you. Countless adventurers before you have taken up the challenge of the trial of champions, but none, or not one, has survived. Devised by the devilish mind of Baron, I'm going to be saying this a lot, so I better get it. Succumbit, succumbit. The labyrinth is riddled with the fiendish traps and hideous creatures of darkness to trick and test you almost beyond the limits of endurance. Two dice a pencil, a Twitch account, two cameras, a microphone, a following, a Sunday afternoon, and an eraser are all you need to make your journey. You decide which route to follow, which dangers to risk, and which monsters to fight. 
And uh, there's an awesome picture uh, from 84 of Ian Livingston. All right, well, actually, I want to mention something else. Uh, in the previous two reads, um, it's been a bit tricky because this is a multi-path gamebook. There's lots of branching paths and stuff. We're getting smart now in our old age. And I've got the uh, Death Trap Dungeon map that we're going to be mapping out here. And of course, it's going to start from entry one. We're going to be taking some notes as we go along so that when we do eventually die, because it is called Death Trap Dungeon, we're going to be uh, essentially restarting from a certain position. So we're not immortal by any means, as we'll find out as we get into our character and our statistics, but we're going to keep track of this to you know, actually try to solve this Death Trap Dungeon. All right, let's begin. So we, uh, there's a whole series here. Of course, this is uh, from a used copy from one of my favorite bookstores. A massive list, awesome illustrations. First published in 84, illustrations by Ian McCraig. I love the art in here. Uh, and a very nice dedication for this book. So this is all, the start of this is all how to fight. I'll go into this and explain it in brief as we move uh, through the book. We don't need to read through all of this. Um, what we do need to do though is generate our character. And there's three main stats um, that we're going to use in, for our character here. Uh, you can see them up on the right hand side of the, uh, the overlay. So skill, stamina, and luck. Skill is what we use in combat uh, to kind of test our scores. Uh, stamina is our hit points, and luck we're going to use in a very a variety of different um, scenarios as we go through. So we have to generate those, first of all. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to roll the stats for them. Skill is a d6 plus 6. That's a... That's, Average, it's the lowest skill that we've come across um, so far in any of our readings. So we'll see how well we fare with that one. So if you see my hand fly across here like this, it just means that I'm editing some values for the, the stream. So, uh, excuse me for one second here. Got the old keyboard and can't see the number. All right. So skill of nine. Stamina, on the other hand, is 2d6. Ooh, here we go. This is going to be a tough one. 5 plus 12 is 17 stem. Obviously, the higher the better, but the dice will land as they may. Now, what we really need is a high luck to help compensate for some of the stuff. And again, it's a d6. That's nice. We got a 5 on that one. So 11 luck will serve us well in our adventures in the Death Trap Dungeon. Now, what I've done here is I've actually taking a luck potion to restore luck because we will end up using luck quite a bit but I may want to revise that based on um, our skill so if our skill diminishes at all we want to be able to reset that because the combat is going to be really tough um, so we can take a skill stamina or luck potion hmm. with low skill we're probably losing more stam so if we lose skill that's tough as well hmm Tell you what, we have no provisions. Let's change this equipment then. I feel as though we're probably going to want a stamina potion. With all the traps and all kinds of stuff that we could be encountering. Let's change that out. Gear and loot to stamina. Cool. All right. So here's a little interesting section. Hints on play. There is one true way through the death trap dungeon, and it will take you several attempts to find it. Meaning that these books, you know, back in 84, um, before, well before any of the game design that we see nowadays, um, this was you know, not just a single play book. This thing was meant to be set in your shelf and kind of confound children and certainly confound me on the books that I have read. And by the way, I haven't read this one. Um, so you, know, you want to come back to this. This is a repeatable experience. And it's, uh, I, I've likened this on previous um, iterations to roguelikes. Um, or kind of almost reverse roguelikes where you just retain your knowledge as to what you did last time and hence the map but uh, we're going to try to well we might cheat a little bit in this um, if we manage to not make it through the first time 
So make notes and draw a map as you explore. This map will be invaluable in future adventures and enable you to progress rapidly through the unexplored sections. Not all areas contain treasure. Many merely contain traps and creatures which you will no doubt fall afoul of. <clears throat> There are many wild goose chase passages, and while you may indeed progress uh, through to your ultimate destination, it's by no means certain that you will find what you are searching for. Interesting. It will be realized that entries make no sense if read in numerical order. It is essential you read only the entries that you are instructed to read. Reading other entries will only cause confusion and may lessen the excitement during play. I would say greatly lessen the excitement during play. The one true way involves a minimum of risk in any player no matter how weak on initial dice rolls, should be able to get through fairly easily. Oh, nice. Okay, well, that's good to know. So if we're smart about it, then we'll be okay. May the luck of the gods go with you on the adventure ahead. Fantastic. Now, this is the standard adventure sheet that comes into the book, which I have pretty much transcribed. Um, this book, I don't know that was ever used by anybody, at least not. Um, the spine is fairly intact, a little bit broken in. But nobody scribbled on here, which is always uh, kind of a bummer. I like to see uh, the previous users' uh, experiences transcribed here. But it's ours now, so. All right, sit back. Here we go. Despite its name, Bang was an ordinary small town in the northern province of Chiang Mai. Situated on the bang, uh, banks of the river Kok, it made an in, uh, a convenient stopover for river traders and passengers throughout most of the year. A few barges, rafts, and sometimes even a large sailboat could usually be found moored in Fang. But all that was long ago, before the creation of the Trial of Champions. Now once a year the river is crammed with boats as people arrive from hundreds of miles around, hop, uh, hoping to witness the breaking of an ancient tradition in Fang and see a victor in the Trial of Champions. On... First of May each year, warriors and heroes come to Fang to face the test of their lives. Survival is unlikely, yet many take the risk for the prize is great, a purse of 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever. However, it has become, uh, uh, however, to become champion is no easy task. Some years ago, a powerful baron called, uh, of Fang called uh, Sukumvit, Sukumvit, I'll say, try to get that pronunciation down, Sukumvit, decided to bring attention to his town by creating the ultimate contest. With the help of the townspeople, he constructed a labyrinth deep in the hillside uh, beside Fang, from which there is only one exit. The labyrinth was filled with all kinds of deadly tricks and traps and loathsome monsters. Succumbit had designed it in meticulous detail so that anybody hoping to face its challenge would have to use their wits as well as weapon skill. Uh, when he was finally satisfied that all was complete, he put his labyrinth to the test. He picked ten of his finest guards, and fully armed, they marched into the labyrinth. They were never seen again. The tale of the ill-fated guards soon spread throughout the land, and it was then that Sukumvit announced the first trial of champions. Messengers and news sheets carried his challenge. Ten thousand gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever to any person to survive in the perils of the labyrinth of Fang. The first year, seventeen brave warriors attempted the walk, as it later became to, uh, came to be known, not one reappeared. As the years passed and the trial of champions continued, it attracted more and more challengers and spectators. Fang prospered and would uh, prepare itself months in advance for the spectacle it hosted each May. The town would be decorated, tents erected, dining halls built, musicians, dancers, fire eaters, illusionists, and every sort of entertainer hired and entries registered from hopeful, hopeful individuals intent on making the walk. The last week of April found the people of Fang and its visitors in wild celebration. Everybody sang, drank, danced, and laughed until day broke on the 1st of May. And the town thronged to the gates of the labyrinth to watch the first challenger of the year step forward to face the trial of champions. Having seen one of Succumbit's challenges nailed to the tree, you decided that this year you will attempt the walk. For the last five years... You've been attracted to it, not for the rewards, but for the simple fact that nobody has ever yet emerged victorious from the labyrinth. You intended to make, um, sorry, you intended to make this the year from which a champion was crowned. Gather up a few belongings, gathering up a few belongings, you set off immediately. Two days walk takes you west to the, the coast where you enter the cursed 
Port Blacksand. Wasting no time in that city of thieves, you buy your passage on a small boat sailing north to where the river cock meets the sea. And from there, you take a raft upriver for four days until finally arriving at Fang. The trial begins in three days' time, and the town is in an, a most hysterical mood of excitement. You register your entry for the officials and are given a violet scarf to tie around your arm, informing everyone of your status. For three days, you enjoy Fang's greatest hospitality and are treated like a demigod. During the long merriment, you almost forget your purpose in Fang, but the evening before the trial, the magnitude of the task ahead begins to dominate your thoughts. Later, one sec here, later, you are taken uh, to a special guest house and shown to your room. There's a splendid four-poster four bed with a satin sheets to help you rest, but there is little time left for sleep. Just before dawn, a trumpet call awakens, awakens you from vivid dreams of flaming pits and giant black spiders. Ooh, foreshadowing. Minutes later, there's a knock at the door, and a man's voice rings out saying, Your challenge begins soon. Please be ready to leave in ten minutes. You climb out of bed, walk over to the window, and open the shutters. Already people are thronging to the streets, moving quietly through the morning mist. Spectators on their way to the labyrinth, no doubt, hoping to find good vantage points from which to watch the competitors. You turn away and walk over a wooden table to which your trusty sword lies. lies. I'm glad there's a T in front of that R. You pick it up and cut the air with a mighty sweep, wondering what beasts its sharp edge may soon have to meet. Then you open the door to the corridor. A small man with slanted eyes, racist, maybe, I don't know, greets you with a low bow and you emerge from your bedroom. Please follow me, he says. He turns to his left and walks quickly towards the stairs at the end of the corridor. Mm, perhaps unnecessary detail there, but this is from 84. Not making excuses, just weird. Leaving your guest house, he darts down narrow alleyways between your houses, and you have to walk quickly to keep up with them. Soon you come to a wide dirt road lined with cheering crowds. When they see your violet scarf, they cheer even louder um, and start showering you with flowers. The long shadows cast by the people in front of you shrink as the bright yellow sun rises higher in the morning sky. Standing there in front of the noisy and vibrant crowd, you feel strangely alone, aware of your coming ordeal. Suddenly you feel a tug on your shirt and see a small guide eagerly beckoning you to follow him. Ahead you see a looming hillside and the dark mouth of a tunnel appearing to its inner depths. As you get closer, you notice two great stone pillars on either side of the tunnel entrance. The pillars are covered with ornate carvings, writhing serpents, demons, deities, each seeming to scream a silent warning to those who would pass uh, beyond them. You see Baron Succumbit sta himself standing by the entrance, waiting to, uh, waiting to greet the contenders of the Trial of Champions. You count five others standing proudly in line, their violet scarves displayed for all to see. There are two bare-chested barbarians dressed in furs. Capital B barbarians, too, by the way. They stand completely motionless, legs straight and slightly apart, arms thrust forward, uh, to rest on the hilts of their long, double-headed battle axes. A sleek elven woman with golden hair and feline green eyes is adjusting the cross belt of daggers wrapped around her leather tunic. Of the two remaining men, one is covered from head to foot in iron plate armor with a plumed helmet and a crested shield. The other is cloaked in black robes, only his dark eyes showing beneath the swaths of his black face scarves. Long knives, a wire garrote, and the other silent death weapons hang from his belt. The five contenders acknowledge your arrival with almost imperceptible nods of the head, and you turn to face the exalted crowd, exultant crowd for the last time. Suddenly, a hush falls over the crowd as Baron Succumbit steps forward holding six bamboo sticks. You draw one from his outstretched hand and it reads the word, Fifth. Then the trial begins. Cool. All right, let's look at this uh, awesome illustration here. I'm guessing that's Baron Succumbit there. I see Conan. Throngs of crowds. This is kind of ominous in the background there, eh? What's going on with that? Crazy. All right. Lots of death weapons. Uh, that's a weird looking dude there. All right. Welcome to the stream. There we go. The night is first. He salutes the crowd before disappearing into the tunnel and is followed half an hour later by the elf. 
Next goes a barbarian, and then the dark assassin. Now it is your turn to salute the crowd. Holding your violet scarf aloft, you take one final deep breath of cool, fresh air before turning into the pass between the uh, turning to pass between the stone pillar gateway and to succumb its corridors of power to face unknown perils on the walk through the mighty baron's death trap dungeon. All right, cool. That is the long and exhaustive introduction to the death trap, trap dungeon. Now turn over. All right, this is where we get into the numbered entries. The clamor of excited spectators gradually fades behind you as you venture deep into the gloom of the ta uh, cavern tunnel. Large crystals hang from the tunnel, roof at 20 meter intervals, reading a soft light, just enough for you to see your way. As your eyes gradually become accustomed to the near darkness, you begin to see movement all around. Spiders and beetles crawling up and down the chiseled wall appear, uh, disappear quickly into cracks and crevices as they sense your approach. Rats and mice scurry along the floor ahead of you. Droplets of water drip into small pools with an eerie plopping sound, which echoes down the tunnel. The air is cold, moist, and dank. After walking slowly along the tunnel for about five minutes, you arrive at a stone table standing against the wall to your left. On it, there are six boxes, one of which has your name painted on its lid. If you wish to open the box, turn to 270. If you prefer to continue walking north, turn to 66. All right, so here comes the first choice that we have in Death Trap Dungeon. Oh, we've come to our first exciting decision. I hope you enjoyed part one of Fighting Fantasy Live Read of Death Trap Dungeon. For more excitement, please consider liking and subscribing this video. We're going to be coming up with episode two soon and continuing through the series. Also, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash iclorox for more gaming adventures. See you next time.